Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show. Coming up... Renewables overtake gas this winter to become the number one source of electricity for UK homes. Green groups urge the government to stick by its commitment to ease the ban on new onshore wind farms. And is deforestation the cause of reduced rainfall in the tropics? Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show, where we track the changes to our world and investigate some of the potential solutions to the climate crisis. Now, renewables have generated more electricity than gas this winter and produced enough to power every UK home for the whole season. It means the country is less reliant on gas imports, which would have been over 22% higher without the renewable power. Well, those numbers come from the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit and their energy analyst, Jess Ralston, joins me now. Uh, welcome to you, Jess. Uh, so just how important a moment is this for the environment, but also in terms of energy security? Well, what the analysis shows us is that the older, outdated energy system, which, as you say, was very heavily reliant on foreign gas imports, that system is giving way to a modern system um, whose backbone is based on cheaper renewables, um, which are from the UK. So obviously, with energy security being a top concern, not only for the public, but also for politicians, um, it shows that renewables are having a positive impact on our energy security. Well, yes, and there are many who will still say that wind and solar are intermittent forms of energy, and they say that we're always going to need fuels like gas to, to bridge that gap. Well, with renewables, what we're actually seeing is alongside the, the boom in renewables industry, like our offshore wind farms, we're actually seeing a boom in the battery industry as well. So large scale batteries, which can help the grid to manage times where we have too much electricity or we need a bit of a boost. Um, these batteries are rapidly coming to market and the pipeline is actually up by five times what it was this time last year, um, with it expected to grow another 14 fold in the future. So these batteries really are the, the industry of the future. We're going to see jobs, we're going to see growth and we're going to see export opportunities from them as well. But the truth is, at the moment, that the UK is heavily reliant still on gas, isn't it? I think the IMF has suggested that it supplies 40% of our power and 85% of our heating. So how does the UK compare to, to countries in Europe or the US, for example, on this use of gas? That's absolutely right. The IMF has come out and said that we are the worst hit by the gas crisis because we're so reliant on it. And that's, as you say, because we use it for power, we use it for home heating, and also our homes are so leaky that actually a lot of the gas that we do have to import simply escapes through our leaky roofs and through our leaky walls. Um, and that's something that the whole energy industry has identified needs to change as we come off gas, um, simply to, to have that energy security in a better place um, and also to reduce our carbon emissions while lowering bills. So how quickly can we wean ourselves off fossil fuels and boost the use of renewables? And what will that mean for people's bills? Well, the more renewables that we have, essentially the cheaper our bills will get. And it's interesting that you've got a piece uh, in a few minutes about onshore wind, because the government has said that it's lifted the ban on onshore wind, but it hasn't really effectively done that yet because it's still subject to this local consent issue. Um, and with that, as soon as they, they you know, have more renewables on the system, including onshore wind, people's bills will fall. And the government has a target to have a completely clean electricity grid by 2035. So in 12 years' time, we're expecting uh, this change to have happened. So it's, it's a really exciting time for the renewables industry. OK, Jess Ralston, uh, interesting to get your take on it. Thanks very much indeed for that. So let's get more on onshore wind, as Jess was saying, as well as the other climate news now. And the UK's main source of renewable energy is wind power. And a group of charities are urging the government to change a planning policy, which they say is preventing the building of onshore wind farms. A consultation on the policy closes today, and the government says it's exploring giving local authorities greater flexibility on whether wind farms are built there. Well, Leo Murray is one of those who's written to ministers. Only one in ten councils in England have designated any areas as suitable for wind energy. So that means only one in ten councils can approve a wind farm. But secondly, you also need, as the developer, to show that the, the concerns raised by the community have been fully addressed. And what that means in practice is that a single objection to a wind turbine can be 
can be used to block consent for it. The government's decision to allow exploratory drilling for gas in the Surrey Hills is being challenged in the Court of Appeal today. Surrey County Council originally refused UK oil and gas's drilling application, but the decision was overturned by the government. The discovery, discovery is worth an estimated £123 million. Reduced rainfall across large parts of the tropics has been linked to deforestation. That's according to research conducted by Leeds University, which found that loss of tree cover means less water is returned to the atmosphere. And just a reminder that you can watch The Climate Show with Tom Heat this weekend. He'll be in Scotland learning all about the importance of peat and how traditional industries like whisky are facing up to the damage caused by digging it up. That's on Saturday and Sunday at 3.30pm here on Sky News. And if you scan the QR code, you can listen to the latest edition of Climate Cast. You can listen and subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts from. Thanks for watching. That's all from us today.